Good evening. I would like to welcome you to the spring 2015 Black History Homecoming presentation by AAMI. Homecoming is a wonderful time for people to come back to their college and visit old friends, make new friends, and have a good time. Black history is a time where it's best that you celebrate the history while it is happening instead of when history really becomes history. You get that when you get go home. Don't wait on history to become history for Georgia Southwestern State University. Matter of fact, this year, we have a young lady who made history, Leah McQueen. Leah McQueen is the first African-American female to be voted in as student government president. Let's give her a hand. She's not here, she's at SGA meeting, okay? So make sure you take your time, sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. These young men have put a, a good program together for you to enjoy, we won't be long, and I hope that it's something that will give you the ability to think. We will have our gospel choir now.
Let's give it up one more time, y'all. How everybody doing? All right, I'll speak to you today as a native from Thomasville, Georgia. He is the third of four children born to Mr. and Mrs. Henry Walden. He is a graduate of Georgia Southwestern State University, and he, is, and he served the student body in many ways. He served, he served as the SGA Senator, the SGA Vice President of Academic Affairs, SGA President, CAB member, CAB President. He is a proud member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity, Inc., and he served as President of GSW Pi Epsilon Chapter. Our speaker graduated from GSW for Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He has pursued his career in marketing and advertising. He currently is National Business Development Manager for the Service King Collision Centers. He manages current relationships, builds, negotiates new business relationships, and oversees community involvement in Georgia, Carolina, Maryland, and Virginia markets. In his spare time, he serves as youth minister at Noonday Missionary Baptist Church in, in uh, Marietta, Georgia. Our speaker enjoys working out, playing sports, watching sports, cooking, and traveling. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a warm round of applause to one of our own, Mr. Antonio Walton. Good afternoon. Now, judging by the lackadaisical good afternoon I just received, I see that fried chicken day is still a valued tradition here at Georgia Southwestern. So I won't speak for long. I won't hold you for long. But in an effort to keep myself awake and to keep everyone else awake, there will be certain parts where I will require a little bit of audience participation. First off, I want to thank Mr. Anderson and AAMI for thinking enough to ask me to come back and speak to you guys today. I'd like to thank, thank the President and all the other leadership of Georgia Southwestern for allowing us to have this type of gathering here on the campus. I want to thank you guys for taking a little time out to come and hear somebody you haven't even met speak, even though I know we're probably here for extra credit. It's all right. I did the same thing. I would be remiss if I didn't take time to actually acknowledge my parents who did come up today. But getting to why we are here. When Mr. Anderson first reached out to me with the topic, I felt like it was a little bit too heavy. A history to remember? I mean, I'm just in my early 30s. I'm not really thinking about history right now, so I know that many of you in the room probably aren't thinking about history either. So in preparation for speaking today, I decided to actually look into what actually is history. And when I typed into Google, define history, one of the first things that popped up actually was a link that said the 10 most inaccurate history facts. Of course, at the top of the list was Columbus discovering America. We know that Columbus was out to do what? Make money. Make money. He was out to find a faster route to the Indies for trading and got lost. So we have a national holiday for somebody getting lost. Women, next time your man gets lost, don't nag him, just be proud of him. <laughs> Secondly, on the list was Napoleon. Now in the history books, was Napoleon tall or short? Short. The history books actually have him listed as five foot two. But if you dig a little bit deeper, at the time, the French were using a different measuring system than we used in the United States. So us arrogant Americans, just thinking that everybody measures the way we do, 
took our measuring system, and now Napoleon is five foot two. But if you actually convert it, Napoleon is five foot seven. Now that's still a long way from dunking on LeBron and being in the NBA, but it's still a long way from five foot two. But when someone says the word history, what comes to mind? Old. What else? It's okay, your teachers aren't here and I'm not going to tell them. His story, which means someone else's story. So once I thought about that, I began to think about all the old adages that we've heard and probably most of us have said. That's in the past. That don't mean nothing. I've changed. Don't look back because you're not going back. So then I asked myself, why is it that we want to forget our history? And with those things and the combination of inaccuracies in history, I began to think, as he said, it is his story. History, in essence, once you boil it down, is somebody's perception of what happened to you. And that is the history that we try to forget. Even though our history is something that de should define us and that should direct us, because it shows us where we've been and outlines where we can be, we still try to forget it because it is somebody else's account of our lives. So history is left up to the interpretation of the person with a pen, or a blog, or a camera. Somebody who is not experiencing what's going on. And that is the problem with history. It lacks the experience. So let's do a little bit of a theorizing here. We all go home for the holidays, right? Thanksgiving, Christmas, Fourth of July, which most of the time entails us getting around a table or a barbecue grill or something else with members of our family. And stories come up, right? Now, how many times have you heard the same story year after year after year after year? But we still request, hey, Daddy, tell them about that time we went to Pizza Hut and the man kept taking all the pizza even though everybody's heard all the story. Tell about the time mama fell down the stairs, even though anybody has heard it. So what is the difference between that history and the history we try to forget? The experience. You were there. You experienced it firsthand. We all have pictures in our phone from hanging out with our friends and every time that contract is up and we get a new phone, if Verizon can't transfer these pictures over, we got a problem. <laughs> because that is our experience. So now we have our history problem kind of solved. Because it's the experience we want to remember. And our firsthand account of that experience is what makes our history relevant to us. But when someone else writes down their perception of what happened to us, it loses that experience. So assumptions, arrogances, and personal biases run all throughout history. And as a result, it dilutes and creates an inaccurate recording of our history. So often history taints what we remember about events and even about people because someone chose to put their spin on it instead of what happened. Well, now I came to another question. If history is this inadequate, if history is this biased, 
Why should we remember it? What is left? What is left to aspire to? What is left to guide? What is true? And I was stuck there for a while. Because if our history is not what we should remember, what should we remember? And after a few days of being stuck there, the word popped out. Legacy. Legacy. Now my question to you is, what is legacy? This is that audience participation part I was talking about. <laughs> so what is legacy? What comes to mind when you hear the word legacy? Tradition. Okay, tradition. Mm -hmm. So we've already defined our history. And basically put, history is what is written about you. Legacy is what is remembered about you. History is what has been done. History is a record of the past, so by definition, history is dead. Legacy, on the other hand, is not. Legacy is not dead, but very much alive. Legacies are shaped and molded and reshaped and remolded every day. Legacies continuously evolve. And the beautiful thing about a legacy is you are solely responsible for creating and preserving your legacy. You are solely responsible for creating and preserving your legacy. You are responsible for your legacy. Nobody else's per perception, nobody else's bias. You are solely responsible for what is remembered about you. So now we're faced with the question, how do we create a legacy? When you think about legacy, the stories that are told, the traditions that you have, you get all these powerful feelings of positive energy. The word legacy itself has such a positive connotation that goes with it. So how do you create a legacy? You find something, a cause, an organization, a person, a feeling, a talent, a calling that gives you that same positive feeling and you throw yourself into it. If it's easy to quit, that's not your legacy. If it's easy for someone to deter you from it, that's not your legacy. If you'd rather sleep than go after it, that's not your legacy. I was on Facebook earlier last week and I saw a video. This guy told a story about a young man who said he wanted to be rich and he met a guru. And the guru told him, hey, if you want to be rich, meet me at the ocean in the morning at 5 a.m. Now the guru was a technological guy. So the young man is like, why is he with me at the ocean? So he shows up at the ocean, 5 a.m. in a three-piece suit, and the guru is out there in swim trunks. So the guru says, if you want to be rich, follow me. And he walks out into the water. They stop when the water gets waist high, and the guru asks him, what do you want? And he says, I want to be rich. He says, follow me. They walk out and they stop when the water gets chest high. And the guru asks him again, what do you want? He says, I want to be rich, like you. So they walk out a little bit further and the water stops right here on their chin. And the guru asks him, what do you want? 
And he says, I want, and before he finishes, the guru grabs his head and throws him under the water. And he holds him there. Now, of course, this guy's in a three-piece suit. He's fighting to come up. But the guru holds his head there. Then he, when he finally lets him up, the guy's coughing, gagging, and the guru asks him, when you was under the water, what was the only thing you could think about? And the young man says, I wanted to breathe. The guru says, when you find something that you think about as much as you think about breathing, then you'll be rich. Your legacy is something that you think about more than you think about sleeping, more than you think about eating, more than you think about PlayStation, more than you think about movies, more than you think about women, more than you think about men, more than you think about cooking, more than you think about eating, a legacy will take over your life. But unfortunately, we've gotten to the point where we only think of ourselves. We are only wrapped up in advancing ourselves to make sure that we have what we need. Not to make sure we've done something to leave this place or our own individual worlds better than we found them. Ask yourself right now, with all you've done so far, just to this point, is the world, your world, better because you've been here? Is there an individual, just one person, better off because of an experience you've had or an experience they've had with you? Let me tell you what I mean. And if anybody in the room has met anybody I name off on this list, I want you to raise your hand. Gandhi. JFK. Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King. Martin Luther. Nelson Mandela. Muhammad Ali, Desmond Tutu, Susan B. Anthony, all right, how about Martin Luther King? Now, Mr. A, you's around with all these people. You ain't meet none of them? <laughs> That is the point. We did not meet any of these individuals, but because of their legacies, we're better off. Because of what people remember about them, we're better off. Because of their experiences, we're better off. So my challenge to you today is not to try to change history. Because we all know we're, we're on a college campus. I've been on a college campus. What somebody thinks about you, you can't change that. No matter how hard you try, whether it's wrong or whether it's right. So my challenge to you is not to change what they think about you. You can't change history. But my challenge to you is to create and nurture and leave a legacy. A legacy that outshines anything anybody could have said about you, anything anybody can put on a movie screen, on a blog, or write in a book. A legacy that will serve as an untouchable and incorruptible source of motivation, guidance, and inspiration to someone at some point in time. Is it easy? No, not by any means. There will be seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years, decades of uncertainty, self-doubt, uncomfortableness, loneliness, 
Because, I mean, we all know when you try to do something that's different, the same people that came with you will leave you. Oh, you acting different. He changed. He ain't keeping it 100. When in actuality, you keeping it 100, they keeping it 32. But is it worth it? If we were to ask Martin Luther King today, was it worth it? Would he change one thing? Does anybody think he'd say no? If we corral Susan B. Anthony and ask her if it, it was it worth it, would she be silent instead of speaking out? Would she say no? If you correctly establish a legacy and you are so blessed enough to be able to look back on it and see not what you've done, but how others are benefiting from what you've done, you better believe it is worth it. Columbus isn't remembered, he's remembered for being a great discoverer, discoverer and navigator, not for getting lost. Napoleon is remembered for his height. You women even gave it a name so you can give it to us. Napoleon's complex. Not for conquering all of the known world. You see, history equals the past. Legacy equals the future. Legacy inspires others. We rarely remember what someone said to us or did to us but we seldom forget how somebody has made us feel. Case in point, I can pick out one lady in the room right now, and I'm not, but I can ask, is there somebody you don't like? And of course, yeah. And if I ask, well, why don't you like her? 90% of the time, you can't remember why y'all fell out. All you remember is, I just don't like her. You laughing, so I know I'm right. Appreciate it. <laughs> but legacies, the deeds you've done, the feelings you've conjured by the words you've uttered, the things you've achieved, the standards you've set for those coming behind you, legacy inspires others to do more what, than what you've done. So the last question I'll leave you with, and this does not require a response, but just a thought. What do you want to be remembered about you? What do you want to be remembered about you? How do you want to be remembered in your hometowns? In your families? How do you want to be remembered when you leave GSW? How will you be remembered when you die? So no, changing the history is not your task. Creating your legacy, that's your duty. So GSW, here's to giving them something to remember. Let's give Mr. Walden another hand. <laughs> Georgia Southwest thanks you and AMI thanks you. The main goal of AMI program to educate, retain, and graduate African American males that attend any college or Georgia University. It also provides social programming that will enlighten program participants to become graduates that are contributing citizens in our community or state or our nation. The success of AMI and its mission will provide for a better overall educational experience for all GSW students, staff, and faculty. And our motto, academic excellence and social responsibility. Again, I would like to thank you for coming out. I would like to thank all the students, staff, faculty, community members, and the friends for supporting our program. 
Make sure you enjoy the, the support, enjoy, enjoy and support activities during GSW Homecoming 2015. And again, thanks to everyone. Please exit out of our left door for, left, for light refreshments and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.